Good morning, this is Pastor Stuart McClellan from the Altoona Bible Church greeting you. The warm-hearted church with a heartwarming message, the family church. Why not join us this morning for our worship service? Sing with us, pray with us, and follow the message in God's Word. This morning I'll bring the message entitled, The Walk of Faith. seated. We're going to continue singing by turning into our hymns 186 and Can It Be? 186. three. finish with verse 5, but it truly is amazing love that God sent his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die for us. Verse 5. said amen. amen we're going to turn to hymn 360 we're going to continue our singing look and live 360 <laughs>
Amen. Uh, for our first number for special music, Stephanie McClellan is going to be uh, playing on the piano, Potter's Hand. Amen, Stephanie. Thank you for that beautiful number, Potter's Hand. As far as the announcements, of course, this evening at 645 is our evening fellowship hour, beginning a new series in the Jailbird Apostle. Monday night here at church, beginning at 7 p.m., is a Monday night club programs, and this is for boys and girls in grades pre-K through the 12th grade. Then Wednesday at 7 is our midweek Bible study and prayer, meeting time of fellowship, prayer, prayer requests, and, of course, a study and a message from the Word of God. So we hope to see you and your entire family to share in this special time of Bible study and fellowship. The choir is going to come and sing lost in wonder.
And everyone said, Amen. Because of Jesus. Jesus is enough. Thank you, choir. Uh, at this time, we're going to continue our singing with 386. We please ask that you stand as we sing Revive Us Again. 386. Verse 4, where it says, Revive us again, fill each heart with thy love. Let's finish with verse 4. seated and preschool through grade six is now dismissed to children's church please turn your bibles to, to the book of hebrews hebrews chapter 11 hebrews 11 verse 1 now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen, for by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death. It was not found because God had translated him, for before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Now at this time, Stephanie McClellan will be coming back and she'll be playing Blessings.
Amen, Stephanie. Thank you uh, for that beautiful number of blessings. Turn with me in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians uh, chapter number 5, and we'll look at verse number 7. Second Corinthians uh, chapter number 5, verse number 7, as we continue looking at the walk of faith. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Let's just look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our eternal God, we thank you again for Lord Jesus Christ, for all that he truly means to us. Father, we just pray for your uh, continued guidance and direction in each of our lives. And Father, as we look at your word this morning, we pray, God, that you would just help us to see the truth of these verses of Scripture. We pray in Christ Jesus' name, amen. The walk of faith, we began and talked about in the last two weeks, and I want you to turn back there, but Romans chapter 1, verse 17, for therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 4, the just shall live by faith. Didn't fulfill Habakkuk 2.4. And in fact, we showed you last week that Habakkuk 2.4 says, the just shall live by his faith. Romans 1.17 says, the just shall live by faith. And that message was the great message of the Re Reformation. Again, preaching and saying, th th these are God's words. Let's be open and honest. Let's put any prejudice that you may have or presuppositions aside. These words are God's words. It's not about whatever religion or any individual. God says that Josh will live by faith. And just think that an individual, you, myself, that when we're born, Romans 5, 12 tells us, and I tell you with all my heart, the, the only answer, the answer is we look at the world today and, and the hatred and the anger and all that's going on in the world. And you see sin and death universal. There's no explanation except for Romans 5.12. You understand that. I think if you have a humanistic view of the world, you would have no answer. Why do the rich and the poor die? Why do the good and the unrighteous die? Why do Americans and people in Brazil, why, why, you know, throughout the whole world, why? Because of Romans chapter 5, verse 12. Wherefore, by one man sin entered the world, and death by sin. So death is passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. We're born sinners. The sins that we commit prove that we are sinners. And the issue is, is Romans chapter 1, verse 17 says, the just will live by faith. The just will live by faith, from faith to faith, from God's faithfulness to our faith. And then we think of those great three imputa imputations. Adam's sin is imputed to our account, make no doubt about it. But your sin, my sin, was imputed to the Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Corinthians 5, 21, he who knew no sin became sin for us. Or that introduces a result clause that we might be made the righteous of God in him. His righteousness is imputed to our account. And the only way you're going to get that is by faith in Christ, right? Can I hear like a amen? That, that's right. And as I said before, I mean, it's a little bit long ago that we want to realize, but back in the 1500s, people were, were burnt at the stake for what I just said. People were burnt alive because they believed in justification by faith alone through the Lord Jesus Christ. Not through a church, not through anything else. Well, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So as we look at this, it's the walk of faith. 
The only way that we can be saved is by faith alone. In the Lord Jesus Christ. And as you come down to verse number seven, and notice there's parentheses around verse seven, it's sitting in between six and eight. And verse seven is such a powerful verse of scripture when you think about it. For we walk, we believers, the world's not going to do this, like Romans 5, 1, therefore being justified by faith, that we, we have peace with God. The world wants peace, but the peace that they want, wonder if it would be, they're ignoring the greatest peace, and that's salvation. That's peace with God. For we walk by faith and not by sight. Just look at the, con- again, we're one, you know, look at the contacts. Who's he talking to? What's, what's, what, what's the context? What goes before? What proceeds after? So you have 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 6 and 8, and the reality is when we look at verse 7 in a moment, we will explain it, but basically verse, uh, verse 7, the word 4, is going to look back to verse 6, we're going to talk about verse 8. That's what he's talking about. We walk by faith and not by sight. I mean, I could ask you a very simple question by the show of hands. How many, how many were there when the Lord Jesus Christ died and suffered on the cross and, and physically saw it and you were an eyewitness of it? No one. By a show of hands, how many were you were physically present when the apostle, when God gave the words to the apostle Paul and they were recorded and written down for us today and God preserved them? No one. But we have God's word. And faith dictates that we're going to believe what God says. And God does not give us this gift of faith to believe. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves. What is not of yourselves is salvation. Salvation is a gift of God, and it's not of from the origin, the source of works, lest any man should boast. So in verse number 6, verse number 8, Verse 6 says, therefore, we are always confident. Verse number 8 says, we are confident. The word confident means to display or have courage. It's an attribute of absolute confidence. Here is uh, Noah's 1828 Webster's Dictionary definition of the word confident. It's having full belief, trusting, or absolute full assured assurance. Just think about that. There's something that we can have full belief and full confidence knowing what God has said. The word home appears three times. In verse number six, verse number eight, verse number nine, and it's translated by the words home and the word present. It's like, and the reality is, if you go back in the context, look back in the context of this, uh, 2 Corinthians chapter four, verse number seven. I just gave you a few of them here, but these are really descriptions of our body, because in a moment we'll explain. We are three parts. We are body, we're soul, and we're spirit. This really goes back in the context, back to the fourth chapter, verse number seven, but we have this treasure in earthen vessels. The earthen vessels are our bodies, and the treasure is the gospel of Christ, that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. And then as you continue reading, he talks in verse number 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord shall raise us up also by the Lord uh, Jesus and present us with him. And then he's going to talk about these mortal bodies, mortal flesh in verse number 11. In verse number 17, verse 16, rather, he says, For which cause we faint not, but though our what? Outward man perishes, the inward man is renewed. Here's, here's the outward man. Then in verse number 18, verse 17, it says, and, and that verse, if you think about what that verse is really saying, for our light affliction, what we go through in this world, it's a light affliction, it's but for a moment. You say, why is it only for a moment? Because when you compare our life, whatever it may be, against eternity, it's but for a moment. 
And it worketh for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see, individuals will look and say, why is this happening to me, and I did this, this, and this, and this shouldn't be happening, and do all those things upon myself. This verse of Scripture, and if you really want the equation of this verse of Scripture, the more the suffering, the more the glory. The more the suffering, notice verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us. See, some people would think that if I'm going through something terrible in my life, it's because God's mad at me because I did something wrong and God's punishing me. That's not the issue. Oh, yeah, we can bring things on ourselves. We understand that. But what we do and go through, it worketh for us a far more and exceeding and eternal weight of glory. Well, we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. The things which are seen are temporal. The things which are not seen are eternal. In verse 18, the things which are seen, part of that is what? It's our body, right? I, won't, I don't want to make you uncomfortable. You're looking at me. I see you, but you see me. By definition, what does that tell us? We have to confess it. We have to acknowledge it is temporal. We're going to leave here this afternoon. It's a beautiful day. For February, you can look up. People would look up to the sky. You're not going to see heaven. How do I know it exists? We walk by faith and not by sight. How do I know it exists? Because God tells me in the word it exists. But I don't have the physical sight to look because God says the things which we see are temporal things and the things which are not seen are the eternal things. Chapter 5, verse 1. And literally, again, chapter breaks are not inspired. But you can understand it just keeps going. For we know that are for earthly house. So it's an outward man, the things are seen, the earthly house. Back in the fourth chapter, the earthen vessels. Back in the fourth chapter, the mortal flesh. Those are all descriptions of what? Us. Our human, human beings. These, these frail bodies, these earthen vessels. For we know that our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. If, seen, if, if so that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle, there again, that's a description of us. And I, and I know can get myself in a little bit of trouble here, but I, I know there are a lot of people who like to tent camp. The reality is, you may like to tent camp, but you still have a home. You don't want to tent camp in central Pennsylvania in the middle of winter time and just have a tent. A tent is something temporary. The reality is, if you think about what God is saying here, we're walking around in a tent right now. This is where we've been hanging our hat. This, this, the outward, here's the outward, Stuart McClellan. And we've been tent camping. I've been tent camping for many, many years. And it's a tabernacle. For, in, for we that are in this tabernacle do groan, being burdened not that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed above life. That he that wrought us for the self same thing as God, who has also given us the earnest of the Spirit, and then he's going to talk upon the word absent, present, in the middle of verse 6 and verse 8 is the verse that we really are looking at and want to discuss that we walk by faith and not by sight. The word absent appears in, in three verses as well here, 5, 6, 5, 8, and 5, 9, and it's translated absent in all three verses of Scripture. And we are made up of, if you want to look with me, the first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 23. There are some who believe the soul and spirit are one and the same. What does Hebrews 4.12 tell us? That the word of God is quick and powerful. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. Piercing, dividing the sunder of the soul and the spirit. Even what? The joints and the marrow. That's body, soul, and spirit. And that's why the description that God uses in the fourth chapter, he comes over in the fifth chapter, this earthly house, this tabernacle. We walk by faith and not by sight. 1 Thessalonians 5.23, 
and the very God of peace. Remember, 1 Thessalonians, first epistle, God wrote through the Apostle Paul in the New Testament. Again, there's a difference. It's not a question of inspiration. There's a difference between the canonical order, the order of the canon of Scripture, and the chronological order. Five chapters, everything is about what? The hope. The hope that we have in Christ. Five chapters, every chapter ends with the hope about, or the coming of Christ. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, that your whole spirit and soul and body, we are three parts. We're body, we're soul, we're spirit. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23, Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 12. Be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Five chapters, five points at the end, always about ending with something about the coming of Christ, not the second coming, but the rapture of the church, the body of Christ. We realize as you go back to 2 Corinthians 5, there's no, people want to talk about death being soul sleep. We see the physical body, but the issue is the soul and the spirit, the immaterial part of man. There is no soul sleep. Death is not annihilation. There is no intermediate place that one can go. Someone would say, well, this person isn't good enough. He just can't make it here in heaven, so he's going to go to a holding tank for a few years. Show that to me in the Word of God. There's no purgatory. There's nothing. Otherwise, it would make a mockery of the cross because then we would have the ability to purge our sins. Christ is the one who bore the sins. He who knew no sin became sin for us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 again. And as you look here at verse number 6, therefore we, we are always confident knowing that while we're at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing. That's why Paul can say over in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 20 and 21. For to me, verse 21, for to me to live is Christ and die is gain. If you continue reading, he talks about that he's in this strait between two. He's in this tug of war. He wants to stay here. But he knows that it would be far greater to be in heaven. But he knows that he has a responsibility here on earth to continue preaching the gospel, the grace of God. We are confident, I say, willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. So God, in the, in the word of God here, uses the term at home to describe both our earthly house here and being at heaven. What we realize is, and what is going to occur in the future, what we realize is, now we are at home in the body, although we're from the Lord, then we will be away from the body and we will be with the Lord in either case. In either verse of scripture, we as believers absolutely will be at home. And so if you come down to verse number seven then, verse seven, as I said, for we walk by faith. There, you might say, well, why is there this parenthesis? Why does it say we walk by faith? Again, I think it looks back to 5, 6, and it looks forward to 5, 8. How do we know these things are true? Yeah, we can, we can look over. Look over with me, if you will, in 2 Corinthians chapter uh, 12 for a moment. And what 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 is going to instruct us, I think it's how we're living for God today in the dispensation of God's grace. One of the principles is what? We're going to live by faith. One of the principles is the just will live by faith. And as we said last week, why does Habakkuk 2, 4 say the just shall live by his faith? In Romans 1, 17, it says the just will live by faith. Oh, I know. The copyists made a mistake, and they just, you know, that's the corruption corrupt version of the Bible. No. The, his faith in the Old Testament was based on what? The Mosaic Law. Read Deuteronomy chapter 4. Other verses of Scripture, they had to follow it exactly as God told Moses. They can't deviate left or right from it. They can't add. They can't diminish. So Romans 1, 17, again, it, it doesn't fulfill Habakkuk 2, 14, but it shows us the just will live by faith. And again, I'd encourage you to read the three chapters of Habakkuk sometime, and it's not talking about preaching the gospel, it's talking about an impending invasion from the Chaldeans, from Babylon. They're going, they're going to captivity, and Habakkuk is, God, how can you do this? The just are going to have absolute confidence and faith in God. 
That's why Romans 1, 17, for therein the gospel is the righteous of God revealed from faith to faith as it is written, the just will live by faith because we believe and accept. Not what a religion says, but we believe and accept. This is what God says. I don't know how more simple God could make it. And I've given this illustration before, but I'll, again, give it to you right now. If we put up on our marquee, and I think if, if anyone would disagree with this, please raise your hand or stay. If we put up on our marquee, free, one, you know, we're going to give away free, well, whatever the biggest screen, flat screen TV, 90 inch flat screen TVs to the first 1,000 people, would you agree with me? that Union Avenue would bumper to bumper people, they'd be camping out, it would be mass confusion there. Would you agree with that? And if you would agree, if they came inside and we said, oh, well, it was just a joke, they would be up, they would, you, you guys lied. But if we gave them away, because, oh, it's free, it would be mass confusion. I'll guarantee you there'd be more than 1,000 people lined up on Union Avenue, correct? But just think upon this. If on that same billboard, and you think of how many people go up and down Union Avenue per day, if you put on that bull uh, on our church sign, the marquee, free gift of heaven, how many people do you think would stop? Very few. <laughs> That's sad. Man, if it was a free, you know, 90 inch, 68, whatever flat screen TV, it'd be bumper to bumper people, it'd be mass confusion. On that same marquee, and you agree free gift of eternal life to know that you can spend eternity with heaven. Few. And yet, what does God say in Ephesians 2, 8, 9? It's a gift. It's a gift of God. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. I mean, Paul, Paul was caught away. And again, you want to read this portion of Scripture in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul was caught away to heaven. And yet it was unlawful for him to write. And, and he will say, in the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. The reason why I don't think he could tell, because he could still see, he could still hear. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1, because death is not annihilation, as some people think. It is not soul sleep. Death is a separation. 2 Corinthians 12, 1. It's not expedient for me, doubtless, to glory. I will, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. We've been looking about that and talked about that for the last few weeks Sunday night. Paul didn't get the whole message at one time. Even here in 2 Corinthians, I will come to visions and revelations of the Lord. Oh, and by the way, very interesting. Depending on when you want to make this to be in, in Paul's life, if you cross-reference this with what he was stoned to death in Acts 14 in Lystra, there are several years in between. And you say, well, what's the big deal? Well, today... If someone has this kind of experience, what happens? They write a book immediately, want to tell about their experience, and people, well, they want to, they, you know, they, they'll believe that. But they will not believe God's word. We walk by faith, folks, and not by sight. Verse number two, I knew a man in Christ above 14 years ago. He tells us, whether in the body I cannot tell, whether out of the body I cannot tell. God knows how one was caught up to the third heaven. And again, that does, there's not three different heavens. Please understand that. The first heaven, where the birds are. Second heaven is the starry sky. Third heaven is God. And I knew such a man, whether in the body, out of the body, I cannot tell. God knows. He was caught up in the paradise, and he heard unspeakable words, which was not lawful for a man to utter. And who's he talking about? He's talking about himself. And what, well, why didn't he know he's out? Because he saw things. He heard things. He couldn't tell. Walk by faith, and obviously not by sight. Go back with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I mean, there's a couple possibilities. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 is very clear and very obvious. For we walk by faith, not by sight. God, does, God doesn't want us to mix the two together. So our walk is not by sight and by faith. Our walk is not by sight only, it is by faith only. How do I know these things are true? And remember, a year ago, spending several weeks, months, or whatever, Newsweek attacked, attacked, 
with all that was going on the beginning of 20, the end of 2014 to 2015 had that series on what? They had a, their, their first publication in January 2015 was about the Bible. You take the Bible away and make this to be some copyist or whoever in charge of it, you ha- we have nothing. Our faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. How can we trust him? Because he's faithful. Can we see these things? No, I, ca- I, can't, I can't see this. How do I know it exists? We walk by faith because God's word instructs us that. And notice, maybe this doesn't seem to be a big thing, but the word walk is in the present tense. It's not future, so he's not saying, for we shall be walking by faith. It's not past, it's present. So reality is, 2 Corinthians 5, we, we walk, we're walking by faith, not by sight. That should be something that should be what? A part of our daily life is the issue of faith. And of course, where is our faith? It's in God. And what a big difference. Look back to Exodus chapter 14. What a big difference. I want to give you some examples of this. What a difference with the nation of Israel. You you can talk upon the fact that they believe God, but they also had what? They had physical sight. They, They saw some things. And yet they couldn't even, even though they saw some things, they still had what? Doubts. And they added to the law. They subtracted the law. Look, look what happens. Moses delayed coming down. And what they ask Aaron to do. And then he says, Israel, here I made these images of these golden calves. And these be your gods that delivered you from the Red Sea. Seriously? What does God say in, in Exodus in the law? Thou shalt make no graven images. Look, look at Exodus chapter 14, verse 29, verse 31. And of course, people want to attack this and say, well, there's no way that this happened and there's no evidence of this. I I don't need, I don't, what I have is the Bible. I believe what these words say. And if I'm going to, if I'm going to go down, I'm, I'm, I'm going with the Bible on my side. Exodus 14, 29, but the children of Israel walked upon the dry land. And I know it's been many years ago, but they, you know, scientists or one of the you know, one of the news stations came out and said, oh, we finally figured out how the Red Sea was parted. There just happened to have been, right at that precise moment, just when Israel is cornered by the the, uh, approaching Egyptians, a really strong east wind that separated the water they walked through. And people are going to, you know, I know people are going to believe that. People would say, yeah, that's probably what happened. No, it was God through Moses. The children of Israel walked upon dry land, the midst of the sea, and the waters. There was a wall on, unto them on their right and on their left. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hand of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. And Israel saw the great work which God did unto the Egyptians. And the people feared the Lord, and they believed the Lord and his servant. What did they have? They had, they, absolutely, they had sight. They had faith, but they saw these things. And you can look at the other illustrations, the sign of the prophet Jonah. The sign that the Lord Jesus Christ was going to have. As Jonah was in the belly of that great fish three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth. They, they, they had a sign, but they could see. We don't have that physical sight. We have spiritual sight to understand and believe what God God is doing. Look over with me to John chapter number 2. The point being is that we're saved by faith, but we also have to what? We have to live our life by faith. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Present tense, continually. That means today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year we got to continually to walk by faith. Not faith in an organization. Faith in the Lord Jesus Christ in the written word. John chapter number 2, verse 18. And we know in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, the Jews require a sign. The Greeks seek after wisdom. Israel was a nation born in signs. Exodus 4, go back and read it with Moses. 
There's another quick one. We'll just read this. Verse 18. Then answered the Jews and said unto him, What sign showest thou unto the us, seeing that thou doest these things? What sign are you going to give? Verse 19. Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. Then said the Jews, Forty and six years was the temple. that They thought he was talking about the physical building. Man, they've been spending all 46 years trying to rebuild this temple, and you're going to rebuild this in three days? How in the world can that be done? But he spake of the temple of what? His body. And as we have seen on Wednesday nights, we're looking at the, the life of Christ. Christ dies. First night, there's no one guarding his tomb. Check it out. And in fact, it is not the Roman authorities, it's not the disciples who asked for it, it's who? It's the unbelieving Pharisees out of hatred for Christ, thinking his disciples are going to come by night and steal the body away. We're going to put the power of Rome to guard him. And they couldn't stop him. His own disciples. His own disciples were not looking for resurrection. Why did Mary and Martha, the others, make that spices and ointments? And when they come back, if you read Matthew 28, Mark 16, who's going to roll away the stone that we can do this? They're not looking for resurrection. Look at verse 22. When therefore he was risen from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said unto them, and they believed the scripture and the word which Jesus said. But it was afterwards. It wasn't leading up to that. The reality and truth that we need to understand is Romans chapter 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Just think of the spiritual application and implication for us today in grace. I mean, if you go back with me to 2 Corinthians 5, 7, it's a simple verse of Scripture. And look where it's sitting, folks. That's the other thing you got to, verse 6 to verse 8, where it's sitting, the issue of absent and present. Right now, we're present in our physical bodies. We're absent from the Lord, for we walk by faith. Not just a one-shot deal. That's why I put on there and would say it's present tense. It's something continuous in our lives. We're saved by God's grace. We're saved by faith alone and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, whether you're here this morning in the auditorium, you're listening on the radio, watching on TV. The only way, the only way that you have the assurance of your salvation and spending eternity with God is to have your faith alone in Christ. That's it. If you're trusting a religion, you're trusting your good works, I don't care how you look at it, you want to dice it, look at it, analyze it, it's, it's, it's not going to work. Because salvation is a gift of God. It is not of works, lest any man should boast. And what do people do? They want to add everything to it. We're saved by faith. We're going to have a life of faith. A life of faith. That's what 2 Corinthians 5, 7 is all about. That's why it's sitting there. For, for we walk by faith. Continually walk by faith and not by sight. Let's just look the Lord in a word of prayer. Our eternal God, we thank you again for the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for the word of God that we possess. We thank you, God, truly for salvation and how you have blessed us in Christ. Lord, if there's anyone in the auditorium, anyone listening on the radio, watching on TV, that does not know thee as your Savior, we pray for their salvation. In Christ Jesus' name, amen. If you will turn in your uh, hymn books to hymn 183, Rock of Ages. 183, please stand. You have been listening to the morning worship service of the Altoona Bible Church. We trust that you received a real spiritual blessing from today's broadcast. It is our prayerful desire that you know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. So until we meet again, this is Pastor Stuart McClellan from the Altoona Bible Church wishing you God's best for now and for all eternity.